Okay, we've looked at the normal distribution. We figured out what that was in the last lecture. This one, we're going to find out how to use it, which is where it gets cool. It's a little complicated, but you'll get your head around this, and you'll be able to make predictions about what something, uh, what the chances are that something will happen in the future. Or if you go and do a sampling event, what uh, the probability is that you'll get any value. And we do that by looking at the area underneath the curve. Looking back to the last lecture, if you remember, uh, we can, if we know the standard deviation and the mean, we know that a certain proportion of any of all of the values will fall within one standard deviation of the mean, and a certain proportion of them will fall between two standard deviations of the mean and a certain proportion for the three standard deviations for the mean. And it holds true for all normally distributed data sets. So that all normal curves share this property. 68, 95, and 99.7%. So 68% of all individuals fall within one standard deviation of the mean. And that's proportionate to 68% of the area underneath the curve. So all of this area, if you took all the area underneath the curve and you measured how much that one was, that would be 68% of all of the area that falls underneath the curve. So knowing that relationship, we can use something called a z-score table in order to figure out probabilities of the likelihood of getting any of the any value again so if we have a value and it fell one standard deviation away from the mean so in our iq test so if somebody got 115 and 15 was our standard deviation they would have a z-score of one z equals one and if they got a score of 45 away from the mean, so if they got a, Z, a IQ test score of 65, they would get a Z equals negative three. That's because they are one, two, three standard deviations away from the mean. So if you go in below the mean, you get a negative score. If you go in above the mean, you get a positive score. That's what Z values are. They're just how many standard deviations away from the mean you are. I hope you've been doing all your homework uh, through the beginning part of the course. So you've got a good foundation. Then these, e these examples will be a little bit easier to work through if you understand what a standard deviation is all about, uh, how to calculate a mean, all of those particular things. Uh, we are going to now work through this example to see how to use a z-score. And I think by working through this example, you may not understand what the z-score is all about and how it works right now, but it should become clear as we do this. Uh, if you look at the z-score work table sheet on Moodle, you'll see that this uh, formula is on top of it. And this is what you're gonna be doing each time. You've got the z-score, that's what we're trying to find out. You have your sample value, any particular sample value that you want to find a percentage. And then you have the mean for your data set and you divide it by the standard deviation. Okay. And for this example, so you take a test and score 1100. So we're gonna use our Z-score and you should work this out at home on your own. We're just going to plug in values into this formula and work it out. 1100. The mean score for the test is 1026 minus 1026. Now, if you know, or you, or you can see that you'll get a negative value if your score here was below the mean. Okay, so if you had a thousand minus a thousand twenty six you'd have negative twenty six okay and we know that we the standard deviation is two hundred nine 
So we just have to divide that by 209. Ah, there we go. So you see, there's the formula. And then once we do that, you can use your calculator, you'll get Z equals 0 0.35. So go ahead and use your Z score table to look up 0 0.35. So how do you look up 0 0.35? Well, here's your Z. That's the Z score that you've calculated. So you've got the zero. So we'll go zero here. There's zero. Point three. So you've got 0 0.3. That gets to here. And then we've got this 0 0.5. So we go over one, two, three, four. And then we go to the 5. So 0 0.35 is going to be this one. You go over from the 0 0.3 and down from the 0 0.05. So this would be equate to 0 0.05. So that's how many spaces you go over. So 0 0.35 gives you a Z score. Or it gives you a probability, sorry your Z of 0.35, or 0.35 standard deviations of the mean, gives you a probability of 0.1368, or 13.68%. So what does that 13.68% tell us? Well, we know that this is a normally distributed data set. We know that the mean is 1026. We know you scored 1100, so you scored 0 0.35 standard deviations away from the mean. Remember the Z score is how many standard deviations away from the mean you scored. So by scoring 1100, you are 0 0.35 standard deviations away from the mean, above the mean. And we know that that probability then of scoring between the mean and 1100 is 13.68%. That's 13.68% of the area under the curve. So we also know that 50% of the people who took the test will have scored below the uh, mean below 1026. So that means that all the area underneath the curve here, the area in the green and everything below the mean will add up to 50%. So 50% plus 13.68 point six eight percent which equals sixty three point six eight percent and now you know that sixty three point six eight percent of everybody who took the test scored lower than you at eleven hundred points here we see the same thing but with those fifty percent of scores below the mean uh, represented in green as well. Now, if this doesn't make sense, um, go back a couple of slides and go through this slowly and hopefully uh, you'll, you'll get it, like if you listen to it again. But what essentially we're using the area under the curve, if we know that this is normally distributed, to be able to make a prediction of any score within the whole range of all the test takers. If we know how many standard deviations away they are from the mean, we can tell, we can say that it's um, right here, this score right here, two standard deviations away the from, the, from the mean. We know that it's a 97.5% probability that somebody will score lower than that. So, only two and a half percent of people score above two and a half standard deviations from the mean or two standard deviations from the mean sorry it's important to say that 
we are talking about normally distributed populations here. Uh, we can often make assumptions that a large population is uh, normally distributed. That may or may not be right, but uh, if you have a normal distribution, then we can we use this to make a lot of probability assumptions. And it's often it's really uh, behind what we do statistically in the computer. All of these tests that you're going to be generating over the rest of the course. It's quite possible, though, to have data a data set that isn't normal, something that's skewed like this, and you'll get like the kurtosis and skewness in your um, in your output summary statistics tables and things like that. But if you if you did have a data an, a uh, nor, non normally distributed data set, and the mean is somewhere over here, then one you'll see that the area of the curve it isn't quite the same. Uh, it doesn't have the same distribution. So it's important to know whether our um, data set is normal when we do our tests. Um, we do different tests if it is not normal. And there are tests to find out whether your data set is normal or not. Uh, and then you might use something that, like Kruskal Wallace or Man Whitney or sign tests or something which are the called the non-parametric uh, non equivalent tests. And uh, those, we're not gonna bother learning them here because we just don't have time. So as you go on in statistics, uh, then, and as you go on in your science career, you're going to come across data sets that you need to analyze that are non-normal and you should know uh, that that is a fish hook that you'll probably have to deal with at some point. But for now, just we'll assume that our data is normal in the tests that we're going to do.